Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to go over Niagara and level sequences in Unreal 4. If you're not familiar with level sequences, this may seem like an advanced topic, but level sequences are meant for directing within a level, or they're meant for animating things within a level over the course of a timeline. In a way, the Niagara emitter and the Niagara system timeline, they're based on this feature. So there's two different ways that we can create a level sequence. The first way is by going up to cinematics and choosing add level sequence and then you can choose where you want to save it and then the other way is by coming into your content browser right clicking and going to animation level sequence from here you can give it a name something like ls and then whatever you want now before we open up and look at our level sequence I want to set up a Niagara emitter and a Niagara system so I'm gonna right click I'm going to go to effects, I'm going to create a Niagara emitter, and we're going to create this from an empty template. And then we'll give it a name. And right away after creating that, I'm going to create a Niagara system. And we're just going to name it correctly, get rid of that, and we'll name it NS. And then let's open up our Niagara emitter and set it up. So right away I'm going to save it so we can compile faster. In the emitter state, I'm going to change this from infinite to once forever. And then we're going to give this a burst, a spawn burst. And we just want to spawn one particle. And then in particle state, we're going to turn off kill particles when lifetime has elapsed. Basically, this makes it so we have one particle forever. Now, the next thing I want to do is I don't want the sprite render. I want to make a mesh. Do a mesh renderer. And then in here, we're going to look for arrow. We're going to do S arrow. And then in override materials, we're going to add a new material. And then in this drop down, we're going to look for nomen, nomen alpha. And then we'll hit save. You can see that we just have one particle living forever with a material on it. Now, I want to set up something that we can animate in the level sequence. So in particle update, I'm going to add scale color. And for now, I'm just going to leave it just like that. I'm going to save it. Because the next thing we need to do is we need to set up a user parameter, something that the level sequence can talk to. But we can't make user parameters within a Niagara emitter. We have to make them in a Niagara system. So we're going to close this, and we're going to open up our Niagara system. We'll save that. And you can see that this looks exactly the same. So back in that scale color, I'm going to change this scale RGB to a float so that we condense everything down to one number. And then I'm going to change this value into a multiply so we can multiply two numbers against each other. This first number is going to be our initial value. And then B is going to be our user parameter. So over in user parameters, we're going to add a new float. And we're just going to rename this. We'll call it my very awesome float. And we're going to set the default value of this to 1. So back in that scale color, we're going to change this B to that user parameter we just made. My very awesome float. And we're going to save that. Now, before we can use our level sequence, it has to be placed in the world, it has to be placed somewhere. And not only that, but we also have to place what we want to animate. So I'm going to place my Niagara system in the world as well. And I'm just going to pull it up, just put it over here. And now we can open up our level sequence. So if we open this up, we can see that this looks very similar to the Niagara emitter and the Niagara system, the timeline that they have. And the way that we can add things is by going to this track field. And you can go through all of these options and eventually you would probably find what you're looking for. But another way that we can add things is by coming into our world and we can just find that Niagara system and we can just drag and drop that right onto this timeline. So now we have a reference to our Niagara system. The next thing we want to do is we want to click on this plus track. We need to add a way to look inside of our Niagara system. We do that by clicking on the Niagara component. And then once again, we want to click on the plus track. And what you'll see in here is that there's a whole bunch of properties from our Niagara system that we can animate. But if you look further up here 
under tracks, you can see there's our user parameter. It's right there. So we're going to add that. And then right away, we're going to key this. So our first key is going to be something like 20. So you see it's really blown out. And then our last key over here is going to be set to something like 0. And right away, if we scrub on this, you can see in the world that this is animating. So let's go take a look at this playing in the world. So if we hit play, we should see this play. And we don't. And that's because in our level sequence that's been placed in the world, we need to turn on autoplay. So let's try that again, and we'll hit play. And you can see that this intensity is fading down. But notice that right at the end, it kind of reset. So what's going on there? So in our level sequence, we have this going from 20, and then it's going down to 0. But what's happening is the level sequence is finishing, and then the Niagara system is setting that parameter back to default. So if we come back into our Niagara system, and we look at that user parameter, instead of 1, we can set this default to 0. And we'll save that. And now if we play, we should see it fade from this big intensity, go all the way down, and then it's going to stay there at that value. Now there's one more level to this. If we wanted, we could create a blueprint so that we don't have to have this autoplay. You know, we could have this keyed off of some event. We could trigger this sequence off of an event. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a blueprint class. We're going to create it from an actor. And we'll just call this BP, whatever you want. And we're going to open that up. Now, the first thing to note here is that if you try and search for a level sequence, you can't add one. You can't add a component. And if you try and drag and drop your level sequence in here, it's not going to work. You can't add a level sequence directly in here. So the first thing we want to do in here is create a level sequence. So we start typing that in create level sequence, we'll get create level sequence player. And we have this option for level sequence. And we can choose from our level sequence here if we want, or we can also promote this to a variable. And that way, we can add whatever we want to this variable. So we'll compile, and you see on the right, under the details panel, we can choose the level sequence from this variable. So we're gonna choose that one that we made, level sequence all, and then off of this, we need a way to say, play this level sequence. So we're gonna drag out, and we're gonna literally just type in play. And we wanna scroll down until we see game cinematics. And in here you'll see play. From there, we need to feed this level sequence, this reference to the level sequence, back out. We're gonna plug in the out actor right into the target. And you'll see that we get this conversion here. And this is pretty much set up Except now we need to be able to trigger this. You can do this by setting up an event, you can do it by a trigger volume, anything that you want. But I'm gonna set up input keys. So I'm gonna right click, and then I'm gonna type in input, do something like K, we'll choose that, and then we'll just hook this up. And now the last thing we need to do is enable inputs. So on event begin play, I'm gonna do enable input. And then I'm going to get a reference to the player controller. All right, let's compile this. We'll save. And now what we're going to do is we're going to delete that level sequence from the level. So it's not sitting in there. And then we're going to drag this blueprint out. Just put it in the world. This is basically just an observer. So when we press K, is going to create that level sequence, place it in the world. That level sequence is going to have a reference to our Niagara system, and then it's going to play the sequence. So let's try this out. Let's hit play. Give it a second. We'll hit K on the keyboard. You'll see it goes really bright, and then it starts to fade down, and it goes back to default. This is pretty cool. This may seem like it's complicated, but it's just a few different systems working together. All right, guys, this should give you understanding of how to use level sequences with Niagara 
and a few different ways for triggering them. So, if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.